Hey guys, so this is part one of my tutorial series on spin math. Uh, this right here, what you just saw a close-up of, is the conceptual model I'm going to be introducing and what we're going to use to actually graph whatever spin patterns we want to graph. So, um, we have two basic kinds of spin relationships, in-spin and anti-spin. Uh, we notate flowers a lot of the time as a ratio of spin, say, one to two. This generally means one rotation of the arm to two rotations of the prop, uh, which in in-spin results in a one petal in-spin. And in anti-spin, which we sometimes notate as like one to minus whatever the other number is, uh, we get a three-pedal anti-spin, sometimes called the triketra. So, um, as a general rule, uh, for in-spin patterns, for these kinds of in-spin patterns, um, the number of pedals is equal to the number of rotations of the prop minus one, and in anti-spin patterns, it's equal to the number of rotations of the prop plus one. And the reason that is is uh, about relative rotation of one to the other. It's like these going in opposite directions. It's like if you were to look at them on a number line, you have like minus two over here. Uh, minus one, zero, one. That distance is three, whereas like in spin, it's just one, or yeah, zero. One and two, that distance is one. So that kind of gives you an idea of how like one going in the opposite direction of the other actually like adds a circle, one going in the same direction as the other seems to take away a circle. So that's how you get an idea for the number of pedals in a pattern. So, th these being spin ratios, uh, we understand that the core of all these patterns is circles, things spinning on other things. So the building block of our uh, function, our pattern equation, is going to be a circle. A circle has a couple uh, things to factor in. It's got, for, in our model, it has four possible starting points around there. It's got starting two possible starting directions. It can either be going uh, counterclockwise or it can be going clockwise, and we notate it like that. This will be starting at the uh, right end of the circle, going clockwise. This will be starting at the top of the circle, going clockwise, or counterclockwise, rather. Uh, you get the idea. So let's just like notate it like that for now. So this is our circle uh, starting at the top and going clockwise. So this circle has a size, which corresponds to either the length of your poi or the size of the circle your arm makes, and it has a number that we're going to call omega, and that is uh, its frequency, or how many times it uh, spins before the pattern completes. So let's just say two. Uh, so yeah, this spins two times before the pattern completes, knowing that we kind of have to relate it to time, because this circle doesn't exist all at once, it's a point on this circle, and it's going through that uh, two times every time the time that it takes for one thing to complete happens. So the way we notate that is just with t. And when we're graphing our patterns, we're going to set t on an interval between zero and a number that we're going to call tau. And I'll talk more about tau in the next part, but uh, the important thing to understand is that for our purposes, tau is the length of time it takes to complete the pattern. So as a result of uh, these four possible starting positions and four possible, like, two possible directions per starting position, we get uh, a concept that I'm going to call the initial phase of the pattern. So that means, like, uh, say this is the arm it's pointed that way, and then the poi is pointing that way as well. So that's like the pattern starting like that, the pen is the poi, and we go out like that. So this, uh, in our two to one relationship, would create a side pointing triketra, if that makes sense. Uh, we could also have arm pointed out and prop pointed in uh, with a two pedal. That would create a. What would that create? Right, that would just be a left pointed one. So we could also accomplish that left pointed one by pointing them both in that direction, give us essentially the same kind of thing. So as you can kind of imagine, different relationships give different orientations of the pattern. You can also have like L relationships, that'd be like at our starting position for modeling it, the, uh, the prop is facing up. Yeah, uh, that concept just relates to the orientation of the pattern. It goes a little bit deeper than that when we talk about third order function, but I'll mention that later on. So now we have everything that we need to actually build up our pattern that we saw at the very beginning. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say P, which is pattern, equals say like, that's starting there, omega equal 1, plus, uh, let's start this one there, omega equal 2. So right here, this is, this is the pattern, uh, we can figure out what pattern that is. Uh, the starting circle for the prop is pointed to the left, the starting circle for the arm is pointed to the right. So this is our like arm right, prop left, uh, initial phase. So like we just saw earlier, this results in a left-facing triketra. And since the circles have the same size, um, I'll draw it a little better. They cross at exactly, there should be no gap right there, and all the petals should be the same, but it's kind of ugly. Um, one thing we can vary, we can vary the size of the circle. Say we wanted to make um, this, I don't know, let's say like, just smaller, like some, some size smaller. That looks like it could be 0.6 or 0.7, or maybe equal to two. Same phasing as before, and now we get something like this, where you see a triangle inside. If we were to make it bigger, we would get uh, something like that. 
So this is the basic working model that we have to model spin patterns. And uh, you might think it doesn't look all that mathematical, but um, as I'll demonstrate in the next video, it's very easy to take this and then create something out of it that we can graph with uh, simple graphing utility on a computer or anything. So yeah, uh, see you in part two.